A link down below as always if you'll want to read this on your own. This downloadable update will include support for the third content drop from the Season Pass and various bug fixes and performance improvements. Increase the Chaos Chamber cap to 50 from 35. A new Chaos tier of gear has been added, Ascended. A new type of run has been added to the Chaos Chamber called Boss Run. PC only added support for AMD FSR 2.0. Wheel of Fate drop changes. The Wheel of Fate categories now include an improved 1.5x dedicated drop chance at legendaries from each DLC that the host Fate Makers owns and that has the correct progress in. Assuming the category they landed on has any dedicated DLC legendaries associated with it, this dedicated chance scales with luck. The Wheel of Fate now spawns four guaranteed gear pieces. When you land on a gear category, give this video a thumbs down and you'll get a guaranteed four bitch slaps upside the face. The rarity chances of that gear now scale better with luck. When landing on the customization category, the Wheel of Fate now spawns two customizations normally associated with badasses. From the main game, plus two customizations from each DLC that the host owns and has the correct progress in. In addition to the support, some changes have been made that we wanted to give special mention to based on feedback from the community. Fixed various rare crashes, including those related to bad numbers when loading into DLC content, loading into the introduction area, navigating to the obelisks, setting a chaos level and chaos chamber, addressed the following reported concerns. Oh boy, there's a lot of them. Fate makers would be pulled into random runs after completing the max trial level into the chaos chamber added an indicator for max chaos levels and chaos chambers. Chaos trial runs are now never random and loop through the same core set. Fusion orbs no longer require manual pickup. Chaos chamber would not spawn as many enemies as we wanted. Increase the amount slightly. Give this video a thumbs down and when you're with your lady friend, something will be in the amount decreased ever so slightly. I'm on three hours of sleep. Work with me. The cinematic skip has been improved. We are also re-enabling the cinematic skip in Bright Hoof. Added a press to confirm, hold when deleting a character. Players joining a multiplayer game late occasionally were unable to select currently loaded characters. Slamming down on large crystal dice would occasionally launch players out of the map. Gear would not sort correctly when sorting by type. Item cards would overlap the bank inventory when comparing gear. The bank inventory has been adjusted to change the size when fate makers are doing comparisons. Marshmallow spell would occasionally disappear when hitting terrain in multiplayer. Sigil of protection spells incorrectly reference damage resistance instead of damage reduction on the item card. The conspiring enchantment would not extend bonuses to companions while Spore Warden's Blizzard skill was still active. Fate makers and companions would occasionally appear as dead to other fate makers. Loot would occasionally drop above the level cap. Oh, that's not a bad thing. Bottle cap shortcuts would not always display on the aura map when saving, quitting into the overworld. Shrines and campaign challenge progress would not always visually update when viewing the world buffs tab in the aura menu. Final castle area in Queen's Gate was missing an area of discovery name has been named Crash Bastion. Fast travel names have also been updated. DLC, some dogfish enemies had no names. They have been named Dingleberry Shitstains. Ear cosmetics would not show the cosmetic rarity level. Purple Ghost would come back to life with human skin. Console only, various split screen subtitle improvements, various UI adjustments and improvements, as well as sound effects adjustments, telemetry improvements, audio changes and adjustments, performance and stability improvements, these are all various fixes, as well as micro patches that were nativized, and more. I'm glad they don't tell us what the more is, because these fucking patch notes are long enough to begin with. Address the following gear specific reported concerns. Some guns lost the ability to be enchanted Thunder Anima, Donkey Birthright, Goblin Repellent, Kao Khan will be able to drop as enchanted and re rolled into Bright Hoof. DLC enemies would occasionally be too calm after counterfeit. Activated the Shadow Dummy. Health bar would not update correctly when the Fate Maker did not have a ward equipped. Bad Egg Ward would give an additional unintended 35% bonus dark damage to all melee attacks. In addition to its base melee buff, the ward's intent is to only award this bonus dark damage when the ward has been depleted. 
bug was causing caustic melee hilt, was able to be stacked multiple times, dealing unintended additional damage. Shell casings ring with triggering correctly. The gear's bonus will now correctly activate when the Fate Maker's ammo is low. The team also increased the bonus while the current gun is low on ammo from 50 to 66%. The threshold for low ammo has been raised from 30 to 50%. Some elemental puddles would not have the expected appearance. After four backhands to the side of the noggin, you won't have the same expected appearance either. Adjusted live wire. Live wire's chain lightning beam would scale its damage based on how low your ammo was, with zero doing the most damage. We've removed that scaling and balanced the beam to do the same amount of damage for what it would have done with no ammo. This is an overall buff, but made the gun perform a bit stronger than intended, so we're slightly reducing its damage. Reduced live wire's chain lightning beam damage by 12.5%. Address the following class specific reported concerns. Spell shot imbued weapon skill would fail to stack twice when casting two spells of the same element. Stabomancer contagion skill had a bug that would allow it to sometimes repeatedly apply status effects leading to unintended amounts of damage. Stabomancer from the shadows skill would not consistently critically hit when the fate maker would use some melee weapons. Clawbringer dedication skill would incorrectly give the max cooldown rate instead of scaling based on the fate maker's remaining ward. Spore warden's call shot. Skill incorrectly referenced damage resistance instead of damage reduction on the skill description. Spore Warden's Play of the Angels was not increasing ricochet damage after a critical hit was intended. Berserker and Blast Chill and Graveborn Blast Gasp would not scale as intended. Graveborn Reapers of Bones skill referenced Leech Efficiency instead of Dark Magic Efficiency. Graveborn Harvest skill would unintentionally keep stacking for the Shroomy. Don't ask. A companion passed at stack limit. The Demi Lich companion attack element would not convert properly when the Fate Maker had the Mantis Claw. Armor equipped. I really need to sleep more. The Mushroom companion had no loyalty and would target other Fate Maker's pings. Seriously, we're not done. Change notes, weekly rotations. Weekly event, this game, this end game. Limited time event will be active until June 30th, 9 a.m. PT. I'm getting PTSD from having to read these excessive long patch notes. Extended the end game mini event, Crystalline Chaos. Increased the base crystals gained from clearing a room by 50%. Increased base crystals gained from big reward dice and chaos chamber by 50%. Double the base crystal from doing bonus objectives in the chamber of chaos. Doubled base crystals gained from the switches in Chaos Chamber. Featured runs are available in the Chaos Chamber after you've completed the main story and rotate weekly every Thursday, 9 a.m. PT. They're the same for all players, so jump in and see how your run went compared to the other Fate Makers. Don't give a shit how other people are doing. I'm concerned about me. The Saint World of Warcraft or Call of Duty ranked play. It's fucking Tiny Dina. This run is extremely special featured run because it was created by our community members in the official Tiny Tina's Wonderlands community Discord server. The server featured daily polls and let the community members champion their favorite bosses of the week. It was a close call, but Daryl had the most active champions and will be the boss of this run. That's not a boss name though, you know what I'm saying? This is an event that will be hosted again, so make sure to join the Discord. Have you checked out all the goodies for sale? Yeah, the shroomies, man. In the vending machines for the Chaos Chamber's loot room, they switch out their merchandise every week. Cool. Improved how Dragon Lord's dedicated loot pool is set up to prevent faults in the drop chances. Parasite was not scaling properly when Chaos Mode was turned on. Prevented Fate Makers from accessing an unintended area in the overworld when trying to collect Zumio's shrine piece. Spell- holy macaroni and cheese. Spell adjustments. Barrel maker's damage and status effects increased damage by 100%. Dazzler's cooldown reduced from 18 to 12 seconds. Dazzler's damage increased by 268%. Where do they come up with these specific numbers? Frozen orb's damage increased by 275%. Gelat- 
Tinas Sphere's damage increased by 100%. Status effect damage is increased by 20%. And its cooldown reduced from 24 seconds down to 9. Glacial Cascade damage increased by 30%. Laser Hands damage is increased by 525%. Reviver's damage increased by 38%. Reviver's Seeker's projectile damage skill increased by 100%. Reviver's cooldown reduced from 36 seconds to 24. Sawblade's damage and status effect damage increased by 100%. Time skip's damage increased by 100%. Note we're aware that the bug that is causing the time skip does not apply properly. This will be fixed in a future update. Thread of Fate's damage increased by 50%. Inflammation spell charges are increased by 3. That's not much of an inflammation. Inflammation damage and status effect damage increased by 30%. Twister's damage is increased by 10%. Class adjustments. Sweet Jesus. While we don't want to make huge adjustments to the new Blight Collar class, DLC 4 is out. We're seeing that Spellshot clubbering are not matching error balance expectations for the Chaos Chamber. We're finding that Spellshot is overperforming. <gasps> no, don't fix it. Spellshot changes. Spell weaving adjusted the spell damage per stack from 10 to 8%. Magic Bullets adjusted the amount of spell damage that is applied to gun damage from 15 to 12.5%. The Clawbringer. Storm Smite. Increased the Storm Smite base damage by 33%. Blast Thumut Favor. Increased the Fire Ability damage on Gun Kill by 25%. Increased Lightning Ability damage on Melee Damage Kill by 33%. Indomitable. Decreased the cooldown duration. From 120 to 100. Thank the Lord that shit is over. As always, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm and making me a little bit more relevant in the search results when people are looking shit up. Didn't like the video. That's great. Give it a thumbs down. I'll bend it in half and break it off in your ass. And twist it. Anyhow, if you want to subscribe, obviously that'd be great. But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care and perhaps I'll see some of you in the next video. Bye for now.